Jesus' Son is a 1992 collection of linked short stories by American author Dennis Johnson. The collection's unnamed narrator, known by the nickname Fuckhead, is a heroin addict. And his stories revolve around memorable drug binges, criminal misadventures, and the mistrustful community of drug users wandering between various Midwestern and Pacific Northwestern locales. Hailed as a point black godsend, Elda Ava Weekly, upon publication, Jesus' Son has come to be recognized as one of the most important and influential story collections of the 20th century. The title is taken from the lyrics of Heroin, a song by the Velvet Underground. The collection's opening story, Car Crash While Hitchhiking, introduces Fuckhead on the side of a road in the pouring rain. He recalls the various drivers who have brought him thus far. An all-American family pulls over and offers Fuckhead a ride. As he gets into the car, he has a premonition, this car will crash. He is so tired, wet, and high that he gets in anyway. The car does crash, and the narrator follows the family to the hospital, where the father of the family dies. Witnessing the mother's grief, Fuckhead experiences a moment of spiritual transcendence. I've gone looking for that feeling everywhere. The narrator connects this moment to another, years later, in which he has another transcendent experience during detox. I could hear a creek rushing down among rocks. And you, you ridiculous people, you expect me to help you. The narrator and his friends Tom and Richard find themselves thrown together with a mute drug addict in two men. The mute man turns out to be a former high school football star. Fuckhead muses on the man's fall from grace as he, Tom, and Richard scheme to leave him behind. Later, Fuckhead spots Thatcher, a dealer who once sold him bad cocaine. Fuckhead persuades his friends to follow Thatcher home. They find Thatcher's girlfriend, and Fuckhead holds a gun to her head while Tom and Richard search the place. Finding that Thatcher has climbed out the window, the woman insists that he isn't home. I don't care, Fuckhead tells her, you're going to be sorry. A recurring character, Jack Hotel, makes his first appearance in E Out on Bail. Fuckhead remembers how he and Jack used to steal the welfare checks of dead people. As he recalls that Jack is long dead from an overdose, the narrator feels grateful amazement that he himself is somehow still alive. In Dun Dun, Fuckhead goes in search of pharmaceutical-grade opium, following the trail to a farm. When Fuckhead arrives, his friend Dun Dun is pumping water. Dun Dun tells Fuckhead that he has just shot their mutual acquaintance McInnes. The addicts attempt to treat McInnes and drive him to a hospital, but their efforts are ineffectual and McInnes dies. In a work, the narrator fights with his girlfriend and she leaves him. Looking for company, Fuckhead ends up at the Vine, a dive bar that appears in several of the collection's stories. A fellow addict, Wayne, needs Fuckhead's help. He wants Fuckhead to drive him out to his old house, abandoned after a flood, so he can strip its copper wiring. Wayne offers to split the proceeds 50 to 50. As they work at the house, they see a beautiful naked woman paragliding above the river. On their way back to the vine, Wayne stops to visit his ex-wife. Fuckhead recognizes her as the naked woman of their earlier vision, but Wayne denies this. At the vine, a female bartender pours brimming shots of liquor and Fuckhead reflects on the women who have cared for him in his life, all the way back to his mother. Fuckhead is working at a hospital in emergency. He and an orderly named Georgie are on stolen pills when a man arrives with a knife protruding from his skull. As the doctors scramble to assemble an expert surgical team, Georgie seizes the knife and pulls it free. The man is unharmed. Later, driving aimlessly on rural roads, Fuckhead and Georgie hit a pregnant rabbit. The narrator tries to rescue the fetal rabbits, keeping them warm under his jumper, but he forgets about them, and they are crushed beneath his weight. No wonder they call me Fuckhead, the narrator remarks. To explain the difference between himself and Georgie, Fuckhead recounts the time they picked up a draft dodger named Hardy. Georgie instantly decided to try to help Hardy to get to Canada, because I save lives. And the dirty wedding, the narrator rides the L a train around Chicago, thinking about his relationship with a former girlfriend, Michelle, and the child they aborted. He remembers that after she left him, Michelle deliberately took an overdose as a plea for attention from her new boyfriend, John Smith. John Smith was so drunk he didn't notice and fell asleep beside her. He committed suicide shortly afterward. But I never finished telling you about the two men, begins the other man, a callback to the story, two men. 
The second man is a Pole in a Seattle bar, who turns out to be feigning his Polish accent. Fuckhead ends up in another bar, there was one woman in the place. She was drunker than I was. Fuckhead goes home with her, even though she is living with her husband of four days. And, happy hour, Fuckhead scours Seattle for a 17-year-old belly dancer to whom he has taken a shine. Finally learning that she has left town. Fuckhead has found his way into a detox program in a steady hands at Seattle General. His roommate, Bill, has a bullet hole in his face. Bill asks Fuckhead to speak into it and tell Bill that he is going to be all right. Fuckhead complies. In the collection's final story, Beverly Home, Fuckhead is working at a home for disabled people. He is recovering from his addiction, and the story focuses on his sex life. He spies on a woman whose house lies on his root home, and he has two relationships with disabled women. All these weirdos, he thinks, and me getting a little better every day right in the midst of them. I had never known, never even imagined for a heartbeat, that there might be a place for people like us. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.